this is what it looks like when you're not sure how you want your soap to be, but you're still working on it. Let's see how it turns out. Hi Soapy friends, it's Steph from Micahs and More. Here's the inspiration pick for my new scent, Pink Sands Type Fragrance Oil. Let's make soap. Here I add my lye water to my melted oils. I've already added Tessa Silk, Sodium Lactate, and Sugar to this batch. The oils that I use are lard, coconut, olive pomace, cocoa butter, and shea butter. I stick blend until it reaches a light trace. The amount you see here is for three batches, but I pour off what I need and then I fragrance and color the soap. I clean off my stick blender with the large spoonula. It's my favorite tool for the main batch of soap. And now I add the fragrance oil. Pink Sands Type is a complex scent with top notes of citrus and floral, middle notes of spice and greenery with bottom notes of coconut, cream, vanilla, and musk. It's a dupe of a popular scent. The fragrance oil has half a percent of vanillin, so it won't discolor your soap very much at all. It's phthalate free, and it behaves great in soap with no rising or acceleration. This is Champagne Mica. I'm using a half a teaspoon of mica dispersed in oil, and then I add a half a cup of soap. I'm mixing this in real time and not speeding it up so I can show you how long it takes me to get my colors ready. For mixing micas and small amounts of soap, I use the small spoonula. It's my favorite tool. Now I mix up one teaspoon of soft pink mica dispersed in oil and I add one cup of soap. My other main color is turquoise mica. I'm also using one teaspoon mica dispersed in oil and I add one cup of soap. I'm also using white satin mica as an accent in between colors to help set them off. And here's my mold. I love the tall skinny mini mold. It's perfect for the size batches that I use, which is 16 ounces of oils. Okay, now it's perfect. Let's get this soap in the mold. I start with a champagne color, which I chose as a nod to a normal sand color, but in retrospect, I could have added a little bit of white satin mica to lighten it. But as it is, I have some white satin in between layers 
which I think works just fine too. Next, I layer in all of the soap colored with soft pink mica. This was the last of three batches that I did today, so it did start to set up a little on me. So I made sure that I didn't have air bubbles by tamping it down. Here's the last layer of the soap with white satin mica. Finally, I add all of the soap with turquoise mica. And now I'll do a hanger swirl with my gear tie. I think these are the perfect thickness for this design. The rest of the soap goes on top, and then you get to see how long it takes before I can finally decide that I like the design I make. I started out using the small spatula with a pointed edge so that I could flip the soap from one side to the other, but then I didn't like how the pink was getting covered up, so I modified that a bit. That really wasn't working for me, so I switched to a half teaspoon to make some designs on the top. And when there wasn't enough pink on the other side, I just used some that was on the spoonula for mixing so that I could add it to that part of the soap. One last look before I put this one to bed. I'll put this in a box and under a blanket for about 24 hours. And here's the cut soap. You can order the supplies used here online anytime at micasandmore.com. You can also join my Facebook group, Steph's Micas and More, and share what you've made. Thanks for watching.